peace building training program for Rotarians and Nigeria peace advocates. I am Rotarian Pietro Ozochuku Maklion, the Peace of Committee Chair of Rotary Intercountry Committee of Great Britain and Ireland, Nigeria, and I shall be moderating this session. Please allow me to quickly acknowledge the facilitators for this training program. <clears throat> Dr. Yerusalema, Susink, and Richard Akbe, all of UNESCO International Institute for Capacity Building in Africa, <clears throat> and Arigatou, and Mr. Milton of the Institute for Economics and Peace, IEP Australia. This training is organized by Rotary Intercountry Committee of Great Britain and Ireland, Nigeria, in partnership with IEP, UNESCO ICBA, and African Union. Like every other country in the world, Rotary International and Rotary Associates have continually contributed positively to world understanding, goodwill, and peace. And the Federal Republic of Nigeria is not left out of this Rotary's act of benevolence. But they need to be more systemic and deliberate with our community development intervention programs, give rise to the objective to institutionalize our peace building approach so that our works, impact, and deliverables could be more measurable and progressive. Also, the need to scale up and cascade our peace intervention initiatives require multilateral and collaborative efforts. These are the major reasons that give rise to this training and engagement with your esteemed selves. Our goal of activating positive peace in Nigeria requires that we engage individuals like yourselves. <coughs> Partnering the capacity of local peace building of contemporary global concepts and methodologies of peace building so that we could form a united front and our peace building mechanism would be more a well-oiled machinery. The agenda for this session, which is the opening ceremony, is concise but very robust as we have high-ranking Rotary international leaders in our midst, African Union representatives, UNESCO, IEP, and Arigatou representatives, all of whom shall take the floor at the appropriate times to relay their goodwill messages and affirm their organization's cooperation and support to what we shall be doing in the next 10 days. We shall also be learning from them about how their respective organizations have contributed always contributing towards peace building in Nigeria and the opportunities and support for local peace practitioners to build their capacities, leverage and enhance their intervention initiatives. A quick reminder about the housekeeping rules for this training. You are expected to be on time, meet your mic while logging and during webinar presentations. Use the Q&A chat box if you have any question and also, there shall be an assessment test at the end of the two weeks training. All participants received an email of this detailed regulation. And I trust as peacemakers, we shall adhere strictly to its provisions. Let me quickly state that in addition to obtaining the international certificate of this program, there's also an opportunity for participants to become an internationally recognized IEP positive peace ambassador. This would also enable you to assess technical support and resources to advance your peace works and further integrate you into the network of world positive peace ambassadors. There is also an opportunity to join the Rotary Action Group for Peace and tap into the wealth of resources Rotary has to offer. As the event progresses, you shall be briefed on these and many other opportunities, including the selection of over 100 peace practitioners for an in-person residency peace training program and Rotary International Postgraduate Scholarship Programs as well. In the course of the registration for this training, registrants' opinion were sampled on their expectations for the training, assessment of peace, conflict, and security in Nigeria, and what they thought could be done to address any of the identified challenges. We got diverse feedbacks, which proved that indeed, most of our participants have a good knowledge of Nigeria realities. Therefore, some of the key objectives of this training would be to build your capacity and help you better comprehend the realities of Nigeria society and equip you with the prerequisite tools to help address some of these identified local challenges. Secondly, 
because we understand that building peace in a volatile environment like ours requires a holistic, sustained effort. Through our strategic peace building institution, we shall collaborate with you to deepen your peace intervention programs in your respective grassroots communities and across Nigeria. Another objective of this training is to enhance your capacity to engineer and implement better community peace building and positive social intervention programs. A key aspect also is for your esteemed selves to serve as partners for the Activating Positive Peace in Nigeria program. To this regard, you shall be integrated with local rotary structures in your communities to act as a support system for the swift implementation and cascading of positive peace intervention projects in your respective local communities. Fellow Nigerians, the surge in violent conflicts and insecurity and its direct consequences on livelihood, peaceful coexistence and sustainable development demands that we urgent attention and increased support be given to the peace building and conflict prevention thematic area. As Rotarians and Rotary Associates had mobilized to end polio in Nigeria, we are now mobilizing and coordinating to advance the objective to end conflicts as well. At this juncture, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, kindly permit me to usher in our special guest of honor to come in turns and give their goodwill messages and remarks about this innovative training and engagement program. Please join me as I welcome first, Rotary and Cyril Norton, Worldwide Rotary Intercountry Committee Lead and Rotary International UNESCO Representative. Thank you very much. I believe it's my turn. <laughs> hello, hello everyone. Greetings to all participants. Uh, I'm very happy to have this opportunity to address you this morning and to be able to shine a spotlight on intercountry committees. First and foremost, I would like to congratulate the ICC, GBNI, and Nigeria for the organization of this peace seminar. From a resolution calling for peacekeeping in 1921 to our Rotary Peace Centers, Rotary and its members have a long history of promoting peace and addressing the underlying causes of conflict in communities around the world. We do this through the values that we hold, both ethical and cultural, and through the service and peace building projects that we initiate. We understand that in order to achieve a more peaceful world, we must eliminate all the obstacles to peace. Intercountry committees allow us to address these challenges. In fact, in 1950, shortly after World War II, some German and French Rotarians met in Strasbourg. They were still contending with the effects of a terrible war. And together, they made a gamble to emerge from tragedy through intelligence. They created the first intercountry committee with a single goal, reconciliation, between their two nations. Based on that example, other ICC were developed in clubs in Europe and in spreading today worldwide. More than 70 years later, similar committees have helped to expand Rotary services, carry out large-scale projects, and take an active role in expanding peace. ICCs encourage Rotarians and Rotor actors to visit each other's country and homes, and to do what Rotary does best, build strong and lasting friendships between club and district and different districts from different cultures. Everywhere, the project carried out by the ICCs demonstrate in an exemplary way how Rotary contribute not only to world peace, but also and above all, to achieving the sustainable development goals that the nations of the world have set through the United Nations. And allow me now to make a transition to our relations with the United Nations and more particularly with UNESCO. You know, one of Rotary's first major efforts to contribute to global awareness took place in London in 1943 at a Rotary conference to promote cultural and educational exchanges. Minister of Education from the Free World 
and international observers attended the conference to consider organizing a broad educational and cultural exchange. This conference led the groundwork for an educational, civic, and cultural organizations that would become UNESCO in 1945. Today, Rotary enjoy an official partnership relations with UNESCO. And this relationship is strong and long-standing and is part of the relationships that Rotary International has with all the components of the United Nations and other major international organizations. Rotary and UNESCO are two international organizations, one private, the other intergovernmental, close to each other on many topics, culture of peace, education, water, poverty, anger, human rights, ethics. We have the same vision, the same goals and similar programs. We share the same philosophy. We are advocates for education, for all cultures. We are both advocates of cultural diversity. We believe that dialogue between culture is a source of tolerance and respect. We have illustrated this proximity of thoughts on several occasions. And the peace training you are conducting is a new example. Today, we are adapting to new circumstances and new behaviors. And I'm not just talking about the consequences of the COVID-19 pandemic. More than adapting, we must be evolving and changing to be as relevant to the ideas and concerns of the times as Polaris and his friends were in their day. Rotary Services has made the world a better place through its vision, values, and actions. I think it is time of questioning, and I believe that this culture and Rotary Services still hold the key to our future. Thank you. Thank you very much for that um, brief recap of what um, ICC is all about. And I could say that um, ICC has done way more remarkably to affect the world at large. Now I want to welcome um, the second guest speaker to give his remark, Dr. Yomiko Yokozeki, Director, UNESCO International Institute for Capacity Building in Africa. Thank you very much, Chairperson, guest of our honors, and uh, officials from Rotary Club. It is a great honor and a pleasure to welcome all the guests to this online two-week training on uh, best book, uh, best book, so, um, um, peace building training for Rotarians and the peace advocates in Nigeria. Nigeria is the most populous country and then has a lot of potential in Africa. So it is a very important activities for us. Peace is one of the African Union's priorities. Aspiration four of the Agenda 2063, Africa We Want, emphasizes that the culture of peace and tolerance shall be nurtured in Africa's children and youth through peace education. On the other hand, African youth and the children are at the risk of violence and extremism in their many varied forms and manifestations at the moment. The factors that push and pull youth, young people into extremism and the violence are rooted in a complex social, political, economic, and educational dynamics. For these reasons, UNESCO's peace building efforts focus heavily on young people, youth empowerment, and there is no better place than schools and higher education and the youth organization to address a large number of young people. Peace education has the potential to transform our schools and universities by inspiring and equipping the young people to live together, to learn to live together with resilience and peaceful intentions. Instead of seeing our children and young people as inferior in capacity or just dependent, we should consider them as persons with a dignity and agents to contribute to peace building and social transformation. 
Indeed, they are our important partners. Acting with dignity and respect towards learners involves believing in their potential, respecting their views, their choices and decisions, as well as not making assumptions about how they want to be treated. So it is very important to work in partnership with children and young people with care and compassion through empowering approaches. We should see them as active agents in society, understanding that they need to be actively involved in building the future world they will be living in. It's not us who live in the future, it is young people. This means we need to see their meaningful participation in peace building as an important pillar that we facilitate through education. The heart of our work as UNESCO ICBA in promoting the transformative pedagogy has been to support this transformation in our education systems. We have seen that when empowered with transformative pedagogical approaches, teachers and facilitators have been able to build more co cohesive relationship with learners, parents, and the communities at large. It has been a very exciting um, process. Due to conflicts in many parts of Africa, as well as due to the COVID-19 pandemic, teachers are now called more than ever to reinvent how learning takes place and ensure that it reaches learners in an inclusive, meaningful, relevant, and a quality way. It requires addressing not only the uh, curricular areas, but also the emotional and mental stress and uncertainty that the children and the young people struggle with. And that influence how learning occurs or not to occur. Transformative pedagogy can therefore support teachers to conduct learner-centered learning that helps empowering learners to reflect critically about their reality and to become aware of their individual and the collective responsibilities, emphasize with others and are equipped to pos positively respond locally in a global context. Transformative pedagogy provides support to reflect on the contextual issues that learners are facing and the helps building safe learning environments for dialogue and sharing um, around those issues. This is a virtual sharing and the thinking platform therefore will en enhance dialogue, generate evidence on the practices of transformative pedagogy and its role in preventing violence. Your contributions will be crucial in this uh, development of evidence-based practice that can be replicated in schools, universities, and the youth-led organizations and communities. So this is a very exciting multiplying um, process. Finally, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to AU, uh, Y4P, Youth for Peace de de uh, Department and the organizers, namely UNESCO IGWA team, the Rotali and Inta um, Country Committee, Great Britain and Ireland, Nigeria, and the Institute for Economic Peace, IEP, and Arigato International, a wonderful partner that have become together uh, to host a joint training initiative like this, following the uh, last year's uh, training of trainers organized for young people and youth-led organizations. It is a great success to see the effect of the last year's TOT. Special thanks also goes to the government of Japan, my country, that supports the peace building program in Ikuba, and it has been running in uh, more than 21 African countries. Dear participants, our colleagues and friends, thank you very much in advance for your active contribution you will be making to this workshop. I hope you will learn from each other and you will enjoy it very much. I wish you every success in the coming two weeks and I trust you will be peace agents after this workshop. Thank you very much. Back to you, Chair. Thank you, Dr. Yumiko. That's really an exciting submission.
And um, we also are very optimistic that the positive pedagogy will be put into practice, most certainly. Our third guest speaker will be um, Dr. Ritz Ibrahim, who will be speaking on behalf of Dr. Ruth Temitope Ako, focal point training and capacity development for PAPS, African Union Youth for Peace. Um, Dr. Ritz, please, you have the floor. <clears throat> Thank you, Chairperson. <clears throat> uh, please note that I'm not a doctor. <clears throat> My uh, colleague, Dr. Rooks, will not be here today uh, as he has a different time zone. So I'll represent him in giving the opening remarks. Thank you very much. Thank you. A distinguished guest of honors, uh, Mr. Cyril Norton, worldwide uh, um, Rotary Club lead and uh, Rotary International. Dr. Yumiko Yokozeki, UNESCO ICPA director, uh, chairperson, distinguished members of the Rotary Intercountry Committee, uh, Great Britain and Ireland in Nigeria, and the Institute for Economics and Peace, colleagues and partners in UNESCO ICPA, dear participants. Uh, it is a pleasure on behalf of the African Union Commission Youth for Peace Africa program, and particularly on behalf of my colleague, Dr. Rooks. Um, I would like to welcome you all to this joint training program with the title Regional Dialogue with Youth on Leadership and Decision Making on Peace and Security, which is planned to run from 14 to 24 February. Uh, the Youth for Peace Africa program is delighted to be one of the speakers this morning as we are starting the new year to continue to advance youth peace and security agenda in Africa. As you all know, the Youth for Peace Africa program developed and adopted the Continental Framework on Youth Peace and Security, which provides the basis foundation for youth participation, as well as target for youth capacity building in various thematic areas, including conflict prevention, early warning, mediation, and the likes. Last year, the program in collaboration with UNESCO, UNESCO ICPA, organized a series of capacity building trainings for youth on peace building and prevention, preventing, prevention of violence. These trainings were carried out to enhance African member states' capacities to use education to prevent violent extremism and its resurgence. Excuse me, sir. Abra? I'm so sorry for uh, the distraction here. Last year, the program in collaboration with UNESCO ICPA organized a series of capacity building trainings for youth on peace building and prevent, prevention of violence. These trainings were carried out to enhance African member states' capacities to use education to prevent violent extremism and its resurgence amid the COVID-19 pandemic, aligned with the spirit of TCAD 7 and NAPSA. One of the training objective was to strengthen the capacity of youth in higher education, youth networks and non-formal settings to work towards peace and have their voice heard. The joint training was organized in 10 countries, Ethiopia, Kenya, Somalia, South Sudan, Uganda, Nigeria, South Africa, Mozambique, Zambia, Zimbabwe and Malawi. And I'm glad to see a follow-up to that training as young people approached UNESCO and proposed to organize a specialized training for Rotarians and peace advocates in Nigeria in order to build their capacity and equip peace practitioners with global skills to address the root causes of violent conflicts. The Youth for Peace Africa program also had similar trainings last year for a number of young people. These trainings were organized with ob the objective of strengthening the capacities of youth leaders in Africa to contribute to peace building, to empower young people for the prevention of violence and to promote a culture of peace, mutual understanding and respect among others. These trainings will continue this year as well. We're planning to reach 
more young people in five region in the five regions of Africa, and will also focus on young refugees, returnees, young people living with disabilities, as it's indicated in the Continental Framework and its ten-year implementation plan. As the previous speaker noted, the youth participation in peace and security is one of the the priority for the African Union. This is why uh, the Agenda 2063 aspiration number six, uh, which, which reads the Africa whose development is people driven, relying on the potential of African people, especially its women and youth and caring for children. This has a framework, uh, the framework that among other things guarantee that youth be actively involved in all decision-making processes. And second, Africa be an inclusive continent with no one left behind or excluded through discrimination of gender, politics, religion, ethnicity, locality, age, and or other factors. During the two weeks training, I believe participants will have the opportunity to be introduced to the continental framework on youth peace and security and its 10 year implementation plan. For the AU and the RECS regional economic communities and regional mechanisms, the framework is everything that we are guided by to advance youth peace and security. And we believe it is clearly recognized, identify and categorize areas where the young people meaningfully engage and involve in their countries and in the region's peace and security issues. Last but not least, I would like to appreciate colleagues in UNESCO ICPA uh, for formidable and strong partnership in advancing the Youth for Peace Africa, the Youth Peace and Security Agenda through education. We look forward to this engagement and partnership as well. And for participants, uh, please feel free to reach out to the AU Youth for Peace Africa program for more requests and also engagements and I will leave the contact of the program in the chat box. With that, and without further ado, I would like to wish the participants a fruitful workshop and also wish the trainees and facilitators a good luck. I thank you. Over to you, Mr. Jeffers. Thank you very much, Oritz Ibrahim. Those are quite uh, interesting insights about um, what the African Union is putting in place to engage youths productively in peace building. Next on our list to make a remark is uh, Mr. Serge Trubert, Institute for Economics and Peace Director for Middle East and North Africa, MENA. Mr. Strubert, please, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Pietro, and uh, good morning to all of you. Good morning from uh, Brussels, Belgium. Um, first of all, let me uh, thank the organizers of these two weeks training. So I'm talking about Fruitry, about UNESCO, about the African Union, about Arigato International, and of course, my colleague at the Institute for Economics and Peace. It's really an honor for us to engage in a two weeks training on positive peace. And really, Pietro, activating positive peace, that's what it's all about at the Institute for Economics and Peace at the moment. Thank you. Special thanks to you. Uh, Pietro Ozo, Uzo Chukwu MacLeon for the incredible work that you have been doing in the past weeks, months and years in bringing peace and peace training and peace building uh, capacity development to Nigeria through your hard work as an IP ambassador and of course through your hard work as a rotated. People like you are the reason why we, are, we have created these IP ambassador or peace ambassador programs to see the development of positive peace in the countries of the people engaging in it. So it's really, really a pleasure uh, to collaborate with you and your organization in the next uh, two weeks. Um, of course, uh, we need to thank also Rotary International, especially this inter-country um, uh, community, the uh, Great Britain, Ireland and Nigeria committee that is organizing this. We have uh, seen Mr. Cyril Martin take the floor, I had the opportunity to work with him in uh, other inter-country uh, conferences in the past, U USA, France in, uh, in November. Great outcome. It's always great to have this exchange between, I would say, different countries and especially people that are all looking for a more peaceful uh, future. This is, of course, part of, part of the strategic partnership that 
the Institute for Economics and Peace and Rotary International have been running for the past four to five years now, focusing on one of the thematic pillars, the thematic areas of Rotary International, which is the promotion of peace. I'm not alone today from the Institute for Economics and Peace. My colleague Milton is joining us from Arar, Zimbabwe also, and we'll engage with the youth later on in when the training will start. Well, about 15 years ago, our founder and executive chairman at the Institute for Economics and Peace, Mr. Steve Killele, an Australian ambassador, an Australian entrepreneur, excuse me, was in Africa, was in Eastern Kivu in the uh, Republic, Demo Democratic Republic of Congo, and asked himself, what is the most peaceful country in the world? Well, went on the internet, could not find the answer, and decided to create a global peace index which would rank the uh, countries of the world according to the levels of peacefulness. Well, this has been done now for 15 years. The 16th edition is foreseen for June 2022. And the Global Peace Index is ranking the uh, countries of the world according to the levels of what we call negative peace, which is the absence of violence or the fear of, uh, of violence. From the very start of the creation of the index, but also the creation of the Institute for Economics and Peace, we have had the idea to also develop the concept of positive peace. What do we need to do to create, develop, maintain, and sustain levels of peace. And by doing so, by investing in positive peace, also increasing your levels of negative peace. Well, about 10 years ago, a little bit less than 10 years ago, we came up with a systemic approach to peace or definition of positive peace is based on system thinking. The concept is based on eight different pillars clearly interconnected, and you need to have an effect on all eight of those pillars to make sure that you can get the systemic transformation. Well, for us, the definition of positive peace, it is clearly those attitudes, institutions, and structures that you need to put in place to create a more peaceful future. Once you do so, you will see that not only your levels of peace will increase, but also your levels of happiness, well-being will increase, your economic environment will become much more prosperous, but it's more than this. It's really all ESG indicators which will increase. Your levels of resilience will increase, and if your levels of ecological resilience will increase. <laughs> Next to the Global Peace Next and the Positive Peace Report, the Institute for Economics and Peace is also producing uh, a lot of core research based on, I would say, other factors and other indicators. And the two, the three more the three most important, uh, I would say, in relation to the training that we are going to receive this week is definitely, and, and unfortunately also for Nigeria, the Global Terrorism Index, especially with what's going on in the Northeast. We are following that up uh, very closely. It's also the Ecological Threat Register that is looking at the interplay between ecological degradation, ecological impact, and the levels of positive peace that is used as a measure of resilience. There, unfortunately, also we see that Sub-Saharan Africa is targeted to at least is not in the good zone for this report and finally also the economic value of uh, of peace or the economic cost of violence definitely putting a price on uh, the uh, the uh, on what violence is costing us on an annual uh, basis so as i said before a lot of the conclusions or a lot of the results that we have in our core research looking at peace looking at the impact of ecological degradation, the impact of terrorism is not so positive, neither for the one of the reasons that I'm directing uh, for IEP, which is Middle East, North Africa, but also for Sub-Saharan Africa, in particular for the Sahel region. When, when you look at this, when you look at, I would say, major developments for the continent, and I would only uh, point one out, and that's the demographic evolution that is foreseen for, for the continent, where we definitely need to activate peace we definitely need to create more stability and more peaceful societies. And as my predecessor has said in the addresses that I've just listened to, well, it is clear there, and anyhow, this is what IEP is doing in the majority, the vast majority of their positive peace training. The future is to the youth, so let's educate youth in positive peace. Let's make sure that we can build better societies, more peaceful and more resilient societies together with young people that are going to define their own future when collaborating with, uh, with all of us. Well, on this positive note, on this positive outlook to the future for all of us, let me wish for all the participants to this amazing two weeks of training all the best of luck and all, I would say, 
positive peace results and let's engage together in a path to a more peaceful future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Strobert. I must say that the work and research of IEP has done extensive works in all over the world. And those are the data that we are relying on to interrogate some of these things. We'd say congratulations and thank you for doing most of the heavy lifting for peace activators like us. On that note, I want to invite the next guest speaker, Ms. Maria Lucia Uribe, Executive Director, Arigato International. Please, Ms. Maria, you have the floor. Thank you, Pietro, and good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, honorable guests, partners, and young people. Uh, my special thanks in particular to Dr. Yokoseki and colleagues at the UNESCO ICBA for the partnership that we have been having during the last five years in promoting peace and resilience in Africa through the empowerment of young people and through education. It has been an, a, a journey of mutual uh, uh, learning, I would say, a journey that has uh, taken us to more than 20 countries in Africa. And during the last uh, couple of years, working more closely with young people, which I think it has been a highlight of this collaboration. And now with this uh, training program, I also want to thank uh, our partners, Rotary International, IEP, and the African Union for this collaboration in, in Nigeria. And maybe I just want to start uh, with a little bit of what Arigato International is. Arigato is a Japanese-based organization. Arigato, for those who don't know, means thank you in, in Japanese. And it's a way of thanking our partners around the world for helping us to, to support and, and work together with children and young people around the world. Arigato International works for the well-being of children through interfaith and intercultural collaboration. And the Geneva office that I represent works on what we call ethics education for children, which is a program that uh, an initiative that aims to, to support children and young people um, on how to learn to live together with people of different cultures and beliefs. It empowers uh, children, supports their social, emotional, and spiritual uh, well being. And we do that through this transformative pedagogy based on our ethics education framework that has been uh, used for the last uh, 17 years and that we have been using in our collaboration with uh, UNESCO ICBA. It's a pedagogy, as Dr. Yokoseki was saying, that promotes transformation, that is a young people center that activates um, critical thinking and supports uh, the, the development of collective actions among young people, children and young people to develop transformations in their communities. So very much looking forward to this training and the results of this training. But uh, when I was preparing for the, for the talk today, I was thinking about myself when I was uh, a youth and the experiences I went through. I come from Colombia, which is uh, a country in South America, one of the most unequal countries in the world, uh, ravaged by a 60 year uh, civil war and with devastating consequences in the life of children and young people, not different from uh, perhaps many countries in, in, in Africa. But I also came from a middle class family and I was um, privileged to have access to many possibilities that young people couldn't have uh, in the country. And I always felt great, grateful and humble for this opportunity to have those possibilities in a fragile context. As I'm reminded uh, very often by a quote of the Christian Bible in Luke, to whom much is given, much will be required. And that, I think, is a sense of this responsibility that I uh, gained when I was young people coming from, uh, com from Colombia. And in the many years of experiences working in Arigato International with children and young people, empowering them to learn to live together with people of different cultures and beliefs, but also equipped to transform their communities, I have realized that peace building is a verb, that peace building is action is continuous, is a process, but also it has everything to do with children and young people. Peace building is about you. Peace building is 
forged by creativity. And aren't you all young people creative? Isn't that in the nature of young people? Peace building is about transformation. And our colleague from the IEP was talking about positive peace, about transformation. And young people are in constant transformation of themselves or trying to make difference and make things act and work in different ways. Young people are challenging the status quo all the time. And that's transformation. Peace building is about courage. And young people are always uh, trying to innovate, challenge, and, and take risk. And that is peace building. So you as young people are called to be peacemakers, peace builders. And it's not just a call, but I think it's in the nature and the spirit of who you are as young people. So as I recall, and I, and I think of these experiences uh, working with peacemakers around the world and young people like you, I want to provide a few uh, maybe recommendations uh, as we move into this training workshop. Be connectors. Peacemakers, peace builders are connectors. Peace building is about building relationships, about this interconnectedness with others, about the sacredness that we see in the relationship with others. Peacemakers build connections with others, relationships and friendships with others. Be disruptor. Peacemakers are disruptor thinkers. They think differently. They do things differently. They see things and solutions where anyone else can see them. They, they dream big and they challenge this state to school. Be empathic. Peacemakers and peace builders need to be aware of the needs of the others. Peacemakers put themselves in the place of the others and they are challenged by, they, by that every day. Think critical and be consciously critical. When you are critical, you are changing the world. You are thinking different. You are letting yourself also be influenced by ideas. But at the same time, you are critical about these ideas. When you are critically conscious, you're also aware of the, your privileges, but the, also of the lack of. And that sense of understanding of the reality and the context where you live is critical to be a peacemaker. Peacemakers act and they take action. With the, the peacemakers not only talk, they make things happen. And I think that's perhaps the most important. Many adults talk and talk and provide many recommendations, but young people are willing to take actions and we should be moved by that. And I think one of the most important uh, points, peacemakers are guided by something bigger than themselves. Peacemakers are guided by ethical principles, by God, by humanity, by something else, by common good. That guiding principle is what moves peacemakers and makes them inspire others. So I want to end uh, this with a, a quote that is um, attributed to the Dalai Lama. If you, are, if you think that you are too small to make a difference, try to go to sleep with a mosquito in your room. And I think that's uh, perhaps what I want to transmit. Sometimes we think that young people are, are, are not adult enough to make a difference, but I want to say you are the difference and you can make that difference and it's so critical. So I'm very much looking forward to, to see the process in this training during the next two weeks, but also the results. And we stand ready to continue collaborating with you, with Rotary, with uh, UNESCO, IEP and the African Union in this effort. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Maria. That, that's quite interesting. And uh, just the thought of having the little mosquito in your room, I can't begin to imagine. Thank you very much. At this juncture, let me invite a few more Rotary leaders to give us a two to three minute presentation or remark as the case may be. Please, first on this list is uh, past RIBI president and past district governor, Peter King, founding member, Rotary Intercountry Committee of Great Britain, Ireland and Nigeria. My DG, sir, you have the floor. Thank you very much and greetings to everybody this morning, a really exciting event. Uh, Rotary has an, about 1.2 million members worldwide, and it has a number of areas of focus. In summary, uh, healthy living, environment, and peace. 
Uh, and peace, as we've heard, is not simply the absence of war, but positive peace brings about cultural respect, fairness, rule of law, economic stability, and the respect of individuals. And so it's been very much part uh, of a rotary life and experience for the inter-country committee network to grow and spread relationships between individual countries uh, and other uh, friends uh, and neighbors to produce understanding, to produce friendship, to produce connectivity, as you've heard. And I'm very proud to have been a founding member uh, uh, of the committee between United Kingdom and Nigeria. It's amazing to think that it was uh, chartered only last year and has reached so many people, involves so many leaders in UK and Nigeria uh, to establish itself very much as a motivator and thinker uh, in these times. This program uh, wouldn't be possible without Zoom. And I think uh, although we suffer perhaps from the, the COVID uh, negativity, we must celebrate Zoom. And that's one of the great uh, tools which help to grow the relationship between UK uh, and Nigeria. We can now visit clubs, we can attend meetings, we can share ideas, we can really enjoy the company uh, of our fellow Rotarians and friends, not only building up this cult cultural understanding, but working uh, collaboratively together to do projects, to bring about positive peace in our communities. Uh, and uh, it, it is a great joy uh, that members of the ICC committee have been so motivated and so active uh, within such a short time to bring into effect the program that you are about to embark upon. It really is a, a great achievement. I've only got a few seconds, so I won't go longer, but I will share a comment by a Chinese philosopher. Accomplish the great task by a series of small steps. It will take patience to build peace, but it also uh, will take commitment and vision and hope. And I wish you all the very best for the coming two weeks. Thank you very much. Thank you, my PDG, for those remarkable statements. Next on our list is District Governor Roger Stent, District 1145, United Kingdom. My DG, sir, you have the floor. Well, I hope we can all see that. Hi, folks. I'm Roger Stent. Um, 1145, what does that mean? Um, well, let me just show you where we are. We're just south of London. Um, that is the map of Great Britain and Ireland with all the district numbers on. So for those of you in Rotary, you can now see how we're organised and who you're speaking to. All four of us Rotarians um, from the UK, that's TJ, Peter, um, James and myself, we're all from 1145 and uh, we're delighted to be with you now. I've been to Nigeria a few years ago, both to Lagos and Abuja, and I have many Nigerian friends, and I am delighted that we are working with you. I think it's a lovely country. Like every country in the world, it's got problems. We have as well. And I think it's symbolic that today is St. Valentine's Day. We're talking about peace on the day of love. Now I know people like Hallmark have taken over St. Valentine's Day to sell their cards, but love in its original sense is about peace. It's about comfort, it's about understanding, it's about patience. And the, today is a really symbolic day representative of what you are about to work on over the next couple of weeks. 
and I can only wish you every success within that. We have areas where we need to work on. Christian against Muslim. It may be in Nigeria, and Abuja is a wonderful example of how to design a city to equally reflect both communities. But we have the same in the UK. We have different regions that have clashes with each other. You may think in Nigeria you've got problems, and I know that people in the Delta feel that they, uh, they're, they're always the ones to be separated. We have the same with the Welsh, with the English, even with the Northeast, even with the Cornish down in the Southwest, where they feel different. And we have to bring that cooperation, that understanding, that sense of unity together. I was listening yesterday to a very wise chap who's a former RI president, Rotary International president, called Ravi Ravindran. And he was talking about peace. And he said, build peace from below, not above. Build it by individual actions, build it by individual communication, build it by individual understanding. And as he put it, wage peace, not war. Actively get out there, use education, use skills transfer, give people the ability to look at it from another person's point of view and move towards them and create opportunities. And you might call yourselves peacemakers, whatever it might be. I would prefer to call you peace leaders because to me, leadership in these sort of areas is critical. Right at the ground floor, there is a lovely quote that I use very often about leadership that I'd like you to remember as you go through the next fortnight and then as you think about what you are going to do once you've finished this fortnight. What do you want to be differently? And the quote is from Napoleon Bonaparte. And it's, a leader is a dealer in hope. And your role as peace leaders is to bring hope to the communities you're working in. And with that, I wish you every success over the next fortnight and for the next years going forward. Thank you. Thank you very much, District Governor Roger Stent, for that remark. We really appreciate Next on the agenda is past District Governor Alison Sunderland, Executive Director, Rotary Action Group for Peace. Rotary and Alison, you have the floor, please. said about leaders and what somebody else said about youth it's not about age because I would just bring before you a few people the Dalai Lama Jesus in the temple at age 12 Greta Thorberg and Malala Yousaf they're not exactly old but they make a difference you can make that difference and we hope you'll make that difference by joining the Rotary Action Group for Peace the Action Group is the primary uh, group of Rotarians under Rotary International who uh, take action for peace. Our statement is to educate, empower and engage. And we're open to members, not only Rotarians, but non-Rotarians. And recently, we have also taken steps to reduce our membership. And we've done this in the light of the economic effect of COVID and the fact that we want to be all inclusive. We don't want elitism. So now it's possible for a Rotarian or a non-Rotarian to join at $20. And when I say non-Rotarian, there are many on you on this call today, perhaps who are not Rotarians. We invite you to join us and to be part of this uh, global peace movement. 
In addition to actually joining, once you join, you'll have access to the website and all that it offers, the peace map. You'll get connected with other peace builders around the globe. Pietro and I got to know each other first when we met in Pune in India, uh, which uh, where he received an award and where seven years ago, my peace journey began. Now, we're also involved in setting up African peace builders um, to actually get the whole of Africa united together to actually work together on the issues that they want to work on in peace. In addition to this, one of the things the Action Group is doing is promoting peace builder clubs. What's a peace builder club? Well, currently your clubs, you have youth, foundation, membership, whatever, we ask you to have a peace committee of at least two members, paid members of the RAG. Look for the areas of peace you're already doing. You're already doing peace, believe it or not. When you supply dictionaries to, do, to a school, latrines, whatever it is, it's peace because the rights of a child say that they have a right of education, less likely to fall into poverty, gender equality, playtime, well-being, protection. The list goes on. You're doing it. Peace is like a swimming pool. We want to get people off the edge and in the water. Some might dip their toes in, some might go up to their knees and we have a diving board. I encourage you to swim up the pool and get deeper and deeper and start to dive. Now, in addition to Peace Builder Clubs, we've piloted three chapters over the last um, 18 months of COVID. I'm hoping that we will have a chapter in Nigeria and Pietro and I are talking about that. But more importantly, this is not about Peace Builder Clubs for Rotarians. This is about Peace Builder Clubs for Rotaractors as well. And then I'm also looking at pilot study for Interactors because we've got various angles to look at in terms of um, safety, uh, protection, et cetera, and data holding. And you perhaps will know that recently the RAG partnered with World Beyond War in an 18 week education program. Nigeria had a team in that and their uh, call to action at the end that they chose to do was to combat the um, kidnapping of young people in, in your country. So there's much that's being done. Another thing I invite today, I want one of you people young people to write to me about this course. I want you to do a half page and send me a JPEG picture so I can put it in the newsletter. I want you to email me so you can join Rotaractors for Peace and that you can think about Peace Builder Clubs. You can go through Payetro to talk about all these things and to seek the contact details, but we want to empower you. He's educating you in this two week course as are all the other trainers and facilitators on this call. And as you gain those skills, we want you to use them. As Roger said, we want you to be leaders. But first, learn to be peace builders. Years, learn the language of peace. And that's very important because peace is a win, win, win. I win, you win, and the community wins. And it's never been more important than at the present. And we're all very much concerned at this time with Ukraine and Russia. And we were building peace there with Rotaractors from Russia, Rotaractors from Ukraine, partnering together. This is what can be done. So I just urge you to actually join us, be part of this movement, come and make the difference and come and tell me perhaps how it should be done. So I give you thanks for being with you today. It's a huge privilege. And um, just let us know how we can help. Thank you, Pietro. Thank you very much, PDG Allison. Peace is indeed a win-win-win. Next on our agenda is Rotarian Dr. Wole Kukoi, National Chairman, Rotary Intercultural Committee, Nigeria lead. Thank you very much, uh, Rotarian Petro, the coordinator of this uh, wonderful program. Distinguished uh, special guests and uh, participants, uh, good morning or afternoon, wherever you are. This is a great day, and I want to believe this is the start of an exciting and a lifetime experience for all of us that are involved in this um, project. It is my pleasure and my privilege as a country lead of uh, Inter-Country Committee of Rotary to welcome participants uh, to this uh, BISCOP training that is going to last for about uh, two weeks. 
and uh, I want to appreciate the Rotarians, the Rotaractors, and all the volunteers that have uh, registered for this uh, training. For us in ICC, Intercountry Committee, uh, which has over 400 formations uh, throughout the world, peace building is a key and a significant component of all the activities that we do. This is why for us in ICC, Great Britain and Ireland and Nigeria, Hello, Dr. Kukoi. Are you there? We probably lost him due to the network. Yes, please. Okay, we have to proceed. And next on our agenda is our chairman, Rotarian Dr. Olatunji Olale, UK chapter lead. Rotary ICC, Great Britain, and, and then Nigeria. Please, sir, you have the floor. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I bring you greetings uh, from the United Kingdom, um, District 1145. I would like to thank the, the organizers, particularly uh, Pietro, for the good work um, he has done in organizing this, this sleepless night. And I would like to thank the resource persons and now like to thank also the participants. Um, it's all, always said that um, Nigeria is the giant of Africa. We all know that Africa is strategically placed in the global scheme of things. Um, but except we have a peaceful Nigeria, we cannot be the giant of Africa. I looked at the profile of all the participants who have joined and yeah, very interesting. Look at the demographics, the technocrats, the professionals, everyone. It goes to show that every one of us believe that we should live in peace. It is only a peaceful Nigeria, a peaceful family, a peaceful office, a peaceful profession that can really optimize their potentials. So I will want to charge all the participants to uh, look at this bespoke training um, with every importance. I would like to encourage everyone to be diligent and to attend the programs, the training promptly. It is something that we will all benefit from. We are Nigerians, although we are in diaspora, it is only when Nigeria is peaceful that diasporans will be encouraged to visit Nigeria. So ladies and gentlemen, at this stage, and at this junction, I want to thank everyone and please um, enjoy the program. Thank you. Thank you very much, my chairman. And uh, we want to encourage you to visit us real soon. The country is at peace and we will walk around the clock to keep it that way. Next on our agenda is District Governor-elect Grace Okaru, Nigeria Chapter Lead, Rotary ICC, Great Britain and Ireland, Nigeria. Please, my DG, you have the floor. Thank you very much uh, for the opportunity to make the remarks in this program. And I want to use the opportunity to welcome everybody here present to Nigeria, because uh, this is actually where it is happening. And I want to also wish every one of us Happy Valentine's Day. Of course, Valentine's Day is a love day. And uh, love is the basis of human coexistence, which is the basis for peace that we are talking about. I want to commend uh, the collaborating organizations that have put this together. The IEP, UNESCO, African Union, and of course, uh, ICC, Nigeria, and Britain. They have done well. Actually, this is the best time this kind of program should be 
uh, organized for us in Nigeria. There are pockets and pockets of violence here and there in the country. Though, it, as it has been observed earlier, every country has its own problem. I believe that this uh, training opportunity will help us more to address uh, the issue we have as regards uh, peace building. Peace building is uh, an area of focus in Rotary. And uh, that is why it is easy for us to collaborate with uh, the Institute for Economics and uh, Peace. And the other areas of focus of Rotary actually addresses positive peace because it's actually the underlying issues to peace building. For instance, Rotary talks about health and hunger. We talk about uh, education. We talk about economic development and empowerment. We talk about water sanitation and hygiene. We talk about the environment. And all these are to having a very peaceful uh, environment that is positive peace. I would want to, on behalf of uh, uh, the ICC Nigeria, and on behalf of my district that I will be leading in course of time from July 2022, extend my hands of fellowship, partnership, and collaboration on peace building and conflict prevention to all those who have peace at heart, particularly these collaborating organizations. Let's join hands together and uh, organize more of what we are seeing today to ensure that peace, particularly positive peace, is what we experience across the globe. I want to encourage the participants specifically to take this training very seriously because it will provide some opportunities in future for them. Let them be very attentive to the training and also be able to pass the requisite tests that will come at the end of the training. This training will be certificated and that certificate can take you to places. Once again, I welcome you to Nigeria and wish you all the best all through the period. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, District Governor-elect. And um, we really appreciate the extension of Hands of Friendship. And we'll be cashing into your partnership proposal in due course. The last but not the least on this very rich Rotary roster is past District Governor James Onions, a man who has worked with us around the clock on the background, making sure that this event comes up excellently well as it has held so far. He is the National Chairman, Rotary Intercountry Committee Relations, Great Britain and Ireland. PDG James, please, you have the floor. Thank you, Pietro. And good morning and good afternoon to everyone. Uh, it's a great honour and pleasure to be with you all today. I'm part of Cyril Noatan's ICC network, aiming to create nation-to-nation -nation relationships. And that we did last year with Woli, Grace and Olatunji. Um, and we were rapidly inspired by Pietro uh, to have an ambition for this event to help create a better environment for all in Nigeria, especially young people and children. The aim in all our ICCs is to develop better international understanding and goodwill and take steps towards a safer, more peaceful world through cultural, through cultural friendship and positive peace projects. 
Almost everything Rotarians do develops positive peace. Our aim is to start the development of an effective network of peace advocates in Nigeria from both within and outside Rotary to, to promote transformation and peace at the community level. The level of enrollments demonstrates the real interest in peace advocacy in Nigeria. The words of support from senior members of UNESCO, IEP and African Union and Arigato, and of course our global head of ICC and other Rotarians demonstrate just some of the ambition that exists. Um, we heard from Cyril of Rotary's ambition to eliminate obstacles to peace. Uh, through projects, sustainable projects, and strong and lasting friendships. And from our friends at UNESCO, African Union and Arigato, of the importance of young people as the centre of our work. They will live in the future. Maria's experience in Colombia highlighted that. Surge introduced the IEP and its Global Peace Index and Terrorism Index and the Ecological Index, which all give context to this training. Pockets of violence were talked about in Nigeria and issues of education, environment, economy, water, sanitation. And it's about building peace from your communities. Building peace upwards, waging peace, not war, bringing hope. May I thank every, everyone involved in creating this event, but particularly Pietro. Without him, this would not be happening. Can I thank you all for joining us and hope each and every one of you gain from these seven days. Please help us to achieve our ambition of a stronger network of peace advocates across Nigeria. Enjoy these two weeks, then be empowered to be a dealer in hope. Be connectors, be friends, take action, be peace leaders. Pietro, over to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, my PDG. Those are strong words. We shall indeed be dealers in hope at the end of the day. At this juncture, we have entertained our special guests and I would quickly add that uh, you indulge us to please um, leave your camera on as we take a group photograph after which we'll go for a health break of two minutes, just stretch our legs, get a glass of water. And when we return, we'll have remarks from IEP, from UNESCO IGBA, and then we'll look at the summary of IEP reports on the trends of um, social restiveness in Nigeria and other issues to wrap up today's event. So please on your cameras so that we could um, record this occasion we could snap it for future reference and for certification purposes. Thank you very much. So since I think you can take it up from here. Henok, who is taking the photograph? So it will take the pictures. Okay, Jerusalem. Yes, uh, please smile everyone and look at the camera. There's few screens, so please bear with me as I take the photos. Sorry, hold on. It's four pages of people, so it takes a bit of time to take everyone in. And one more. Okay, I think we're good. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sasit. Um, please.
we have two minutes. We shall be reconverging in two minutes time. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. We're almost there and uh, we'll try to round up as scheduled. Okay, at this point, I would like um, Mr. Milton, the Institute for Economics and Peace Facilitator, to give uh, the participants a quick rundown of what this week's training would entail after which um, the UNESCO ICBA team will give you a quick rundown of what week two will entail so that participants know what to expect and how they are expected to provide certain key informations or key activities in the course of the training. Mr. Milton, please, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, thank you, Pietro, and then thank you as well to the very distinguished guests of honor uh, who graced us with their, with their presence from Rotary, from uh, the African Union, from uh, Arigato. Uh, we are very grateful for your, for your presence and for your support. I think it means a lot to us, not just as the IAP, but I think I can confidently speak uh, for all the participants that you know it, it, it adds hope where there is more hope. So I think we, we, we are generating a good critical mass um, of peace builders, of peace leaders uh, uh, today. So if you'll allow me, I'll briefly share my screen so that we can have a quick look at uh, what our week will look like. Uh, let me know once you can see my screen, please. Yes, it's visible now. You can proceed. Okay, perfect. So uh, my colleague Serge uh, very uh, briefly uh, gave an overview of who we are as the, as the IEP. We're an international think tank that deals with issues to do with peace and positive peace. So we will be taking week one of this training. And the week will constitute of three pre-recorded sessions. The first session will deal with 
a largely positive piece, a description of the eight pillars of peace and how uh, they work together and a few examples as well. The second pre-recorded session will deal some more with the pillars of peace, but then go on to add what we call systems thinking, which is a way of looking at the world in that it is all an interconnected system uh, in which you can't uh, disconnect one part from another part. In this way, you're able to take the positive peace framework and effectively apply it to your everyday life. Uh, I think I was looking at a, at a profile of the people we, we have online. Uh, we have people in the medical field, we have people in politics, we have people uh, who, who are into very scientific things. Uh, we have students here, we have development workers, we have accountants, and this is good. Peace is everyone's work. So the systems approach allows us to connect all of these the different areas that may seem as though they're not connected, but then they are. And then the third session uh, will close out our weekly uh, pre-recorded sessions and then uh, involve a little bit of, of, of MND as well as a few testimonials and examples of how the positive peace framework has been applied before. Now with each pre-recorded session, there will be a corresponding live session. This means that the first pre-recorded session will be followed by a live session, which will be held um, at the same time, but on Wednesday. And during that session, we will be responding to questions and having an active discussion with all our participants on the content of the session and any other things uh, that might have come up either in, in a reading of, of uh, our material as IEP or in looking at the, at the society. After hearing about positive peace, you might think to yourself, no, 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 what does this mean uh, in the context of sexual and reproductive health rights? So these are the questions we'll begin answering uh, in our live sessions. The second live session will happen on Thursday at the same time. And then the, thir the third and final live session will happen on Friday as well at the same time. I included the next point under week one overview, but this will happen after the first week and indeed after the second week. All participants will be expected to complete a positive peace presentation or positive peace project before you are certified as uh, IEP ambassadors. This means using the, the information you'd have learned over the next two weeks, you convene a meeting, uh, it could be of peers, it could be uh, of, of uh, policy makers, it could be of development, but it could be of community leaders and community members. And you deliver a positive peace team project or presentation. And this can take up to uh, one month or two months. I think we'll be in constant contact uh, with each and every one of you to make sure that uh, this is delivered before your, your certificate. The last part is, of course, that we expect you to complete the online Positive Peace Academy. This is a shorter course that, again, covers the eight pillars and is available on the website that's on your screen. I will share uh, that link with you along with instructions on how to connect, because this is absolutely important uh, if you are to be able to participate. So this is the text I will be sharing with you. And it simply uh, refers to the link which you will use uh, to connect to the online platform where you will find each of the pre-recorded sessions. Session one is already available, and then session two will be available on Wednesday, and then session three uh, on Thursday, I think. So when you log on to that website, you need to go to where it says start now to begin the login process. And then when you get there, if you have never used any other IEP uh, product or applied to IEP, you go to where it says new member. But if you have done that before, you go where it says exist existing member. However, if you've forgotten that uh, you've used it before in the past or you can't find your password 
or anything like that, you can create a new email address and then uh, simply go where it says new member um, and then complete the process again. So I'll share this text in the, in the chat box so that everyone is clear on the instructions. And then if you have any queries or questions or anything is unclear, um, you can email us at harare at economicsandpeace.org. So as I said, uh, when you go onto the website, you will see where it says, uh, this is what the landing page will look like after it says, you say start nine now, sorry. And you will either go where it says, as I said, existing members, or new members and then need the sign in or sign up. So I'll share all of this information with uh, you in the chat box. And again, uh, congratulations for signing up. We look forward to a terrific two weeks of, of, of training and conversing and really grappling with the issues uh, that make up peace. These are our communities, these are our families, uh, and this is our future. So uh, really we look forward to sharing uh, the next week with you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Milton. Uh, I expect that the email will be shared to them today so that they start um, getting through that process. And I would uh, please ask that you make it a bit more simplified. Okay. Um, I'd like to invite for the second half of the week so that participants may prepare as well. Hello, everyone. I hope uh, you're able to see the screen. Yes, the screen is visible. Okay, great. Um, as uh, was mentioned, my name is Suchit. Uh, I'm connecting actually from Sri Lanka, so uh, another part of the world. Um, and I'm looking forward to leading the training in the second week with my colleague, uh, Richard, uh, who's gonna join us for the next week. Uh, Richard is Nigerian and I'm Sri Lankan and we'll, the two of us will lead the training uh, next week together with Dr. Jerusalem uh, from UNESCO IGBA. Uh, who's uh, based in Ethiopia. So I'm gonna quickly give you an overview of the training. Um, and I think some of the information you've already received, uh, the, the objectives of this training overall is to really empower uh, you to be peace advocates and to operationalize peace building in your own context. And for that, there's two critical components that we see is, the first part is our understanding, our analysis, our understanding of what is peace and the issues around peace. And that's what we hope, uh, especially with the work with that IEP has been do doing, get this big picture of, of and, and the details of what is the realities in our communities, what are the issues and what uh, is driving peace, what is uh, limiting peace in our co communities. To, this understanding is crucial. And then in the second part of the training, uh, the, the week that we will lead is more about the pedagogy. How do we then, relate this to other people? How do we engage other people in an empowering way to, towards building peace? We say peace is not just a de destination, but it's also the journey. So what is our approach in communicating this information around peace building, uh, engaging with young people and empowering young people? When we want to do something with a school or a university or a, another group of uh, youth organizations, how do we go about doing that without uh, further ostracizing them or further uh, pushing them and just building, uh, trying to put, impart information onto them. How do we do so in an empowering way? So this is uh, what our training is gonna look like um, and focus on. So during the second week, we will uh, have three different sessions, Monday next week, Wednesday and Thursday, three live sessions. And we hope to make it very interactive for you. So it will not be uh, uh, like today where you mostly listen, but there'll be many moments of uh, interaction where you will be growing to groups at the, at the same time also have opportunities to reflect about yourself, uh, learn about others thinking. So we will try to be engaging as possible using activities during this 
two hours uh, of the three different sessions that we will have. The first session will focus on the ethics of learning to live together. We, we are from different communities, we are from different religious backgrounds, um, we may be belonging to different ethnic groups. How do we learn to live together? It's not so easy as uh, we believe, right? So what, what are the ethics of learning to live together? What can help us uh, learn to live together? And then we want to focus from there to the role of education. How can education really contribute to this? We've already highlighted, many of the speakers this morning highlighted the importance of education in building peace. So we want to discuss with you this role, that unique role that education can play and has to play in building peace and resilience in our communities. On the second session, we want to then go into a bit more practicalities and really see how do we ensure that we do so with a participatory approach? What is participation? How do we make sure young people and children going through our peace programs are really participating and that participation is authentic? How do we engage the community in this process? We, uh, it was already talked about a systemic approach. So our programs have to engage the wider community, the system as a whole. How do we do that? What are, who are some of the key stakeholders to bring into this process and in what ways? That's what we are gonna explore in that second session. In the third session, then we want to discuss about how we can give the driving seat to children and young people. Sometimes ownership is ours and we kind of get in the way, we make the key decisions and we block the, the path and we just uh, sort of direct children and young people on what we want to do. But rather, can we open up that creativity in them? Can we empower them? So how do we create that space and opportunity for young people to lead their own actions for peace, to build that world that they want to live in, which might be different to the world that we live in? So this is going to be the focus of the third day. How do we really support children and young people to lead actions? We see young people uh, like Greta Thunberg. Why is she able to build a movement, whereas maybe other young people are not able to do so. What's the difference of support and empowerment that they receive? Can we have more young people building peace in our communities with such empowerment and leading their own actions? How do we do that? This is what uh, we will explore in the third session. Our work um, comes from, uh, since 2017, we've been implementing a program on transformative pedagogy for peace building and resilience building uh, with UNESCO IBA and the organization I represent, Arigato International, collaborating together. And we've been training ministries of education, higher education institutes and universities from around 26 countries across Africa over the last five years. And we've, adapted, we've developed some teacher guides. These are uh, for Horn of Africa, the Sahel and the surrounding countries. We have for Southern Africa and Northern Africa as well. So the, this transformative pedagogy guide for teachers has been adapted to different parts of Africa and specific adaptations to different countries as well. What is the transformative pedagogy we talk about? I don't want to go into the details because this is what's coming up next week, but this is an approach that we talk about, an empowering holistic approach to uh, edu peace education that we want to introduce to you next week. Uh, this particular training will be built on the uh, one of the other guides that we developed, and that's the Youth Guide on Education for Peace Building and the Prevention of Violence. Uh, Pietro, who's part, uh, leading this training and who has convened this training, went through this uh, workshop last year once this uh, guide was developed. And, uh, and this is sort of a, uh, our collaboration with Pietro is as, as a follow up to this training. So we, we are actually building this training uh, on the second week based on this guide as well. And you'll have this available to you as well uh, so that you can uh, work with young people uh, on empowering approaches for peace building. It includes a, a, a context analysis. It talks about the role of education, the pedagogical approaches, and then it talks about programmatic, how to implement a program, and then gives lots of practical activities that can be used in, in a, to enhance participation and to really help think critically to develop that empathy that we talked about uh, among young people when it comes to peace building. These are some glimpses of what it is, uh, what it includes. So it also guides uh, on how to build a peace education program, how to plan, how to prepare for that, and then how to design the content and deliver that program in a way that is 
comprehensive and holistic and uh, makes the critical uh, components uh, that are needed for uh, 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 impactful program. So this is what we, we are going to uh, look forward to uh, engaging with you. As I said, we look forward to some interactive sessions in, during the second week and look forward for your participation. And I'm gonna hand the floor back to Pietro. Thank you, Pietro. Thank you very much, Susan. That's a very, a very, very elaborate training. And um, we are looking forward to having those pedagogies to inform the modeling of peace building activities and during, within the forwards and outside the forwards of education. Thank you very much. At this point, I think um, it's time for us to have a summary of IEP reports on data and trends for Nigeria. So I think um, we'll be having Mr. Milton back to make this quick presentation so that we can take um, a couple of questions and conclude for the day. Uh, thank you once more, Pietro, um, and with your permission, I'll go very quickly into my presentation. I'm hoping that it's now becoming clearer and clearer that uh, our focus in this training is less on the theoretical aspects of what peace is, or what positive peace is, or what peace building is, but rather on how to apply these things in our lives, in our professions, in our communities every day. More than that, we are hoping that these are things that will be able to be passed on from citizen to citizen. So you are trained now, but then as you work, your colleagues begin to see these things. As you speak about them, your communities begin to receive this knowledge. So this is, I think, an, a very important training outcome and output which must uh, keep our, our eyes on. So let me know once you can see my screen. Yes, please, it's up. Okay, as Serge highlighted, we produce as the IEP several reports every single year. And the flagship- Sorry, okay, okay. Continue, please. Okay, no, I do not know why <laughs> my PowerPoint <laughs> is glitching, but okay. The key report that we produce is what is called the Global Peace Index. And we're in the 15th year of producing this report. And it measures countries from number one to number 163 in terms of their relative peacefulness. And we do this according to three baskets of, of indicators or three domains of indicators. Number one is level of militarization. This looks at, of course, the uh, uh, how many army personnel, how much you spend on the army and so on. The second is uh, safety and security. And this looks at issues to do with crime, homicide rates and so on and so forth. And then the third has to do with international and national and, and local conflict. So this looks at whether or not you're at war, either abroad or within your own community. And using these three indicators, we come up with the global peace index. Now, when you're number one, it doesn't mean that you have all the peace and number 163 has none of the peace. It's a relative score uh, according to these indicators. So in Nigeria in the 2021 uh, Global Peace Index rose by one place from number 147 out of 163 to number 146 out of 163. In the Sub-Saharan Africa region, uh, Nigeria was 39, out of 44, experiencing deteriorations in five uh, indicators, and then improvements in nine, and then, of course, uh, another nine were unchanged. Nigeria has what we call a positive peace deficit of 11, which is something we'll get onto uh, in the next session or, or, or later on today. So if you take a look at the screen now, it should be uh, shortly just giving you an outline of the indicators where there were improvements and the indicators where there were deterioration. You will see that perceptions of criminality, for example, the refugees and IDPs and homicide rates uh, were the indicators that fell with an especially large drop in homicide rates. And I think this brings me to an important point, which is sometimes the ranking is not very important. Sometimes uh, the scores themselves are not that important because when you look at these things, it's easy to then panic and say, oh no, we are terrible. 
oh no, we are going nowhere. But then what this does is it points at the specific opportunities for growth. Because now when you have noticed those indicators, you begin to see where can we strengthen, uh, where can we build momentum upon, and so on and so forth. Other reports that we do at the uh, Institute for Economics and Peace include the global, uh, the, sorry, the Economic Threat Register. The Global Threat Register looks basically at what you might call climate change issues, uh, if you want to look at it that way. And this is very, very critically important for peace and positive peace. And I wanted to talk about this report before we go into positive peace uh, for one simple reason which is most things that even uh, policymakers may think are not related to peace are very clearly related to peace. For example, the Ecological Trade Register identifies that Nigeria has a, a, a count of five ecological threats that are affected. This is water risk, food insecurity, population growth, as well as the threat of drought. Milton, your internet is not stable. Oh no, I'm I'm sorry about that. Um, can you hear me now? Yes, it's better. Please, um, you have to go a, re reverse a little. Okay. Uh, how much much did you miss? Sorry. Mm, Forty five seconds ago. Okay. No, that's fine. So let me just pick up uh, from where the slide is and go into what we call the positive peace, which is the very reason why we are here. After doing the Global Peace Index, the IEP began to look at all these things and ask, what is this peace thing? And the answer was always, it is the absence of war. It is the absence of, of uh, strife. It is the absence of fear. So you'll notice that in its description, it is minus war. It is minus fear. It is minus uh, crime and so on and so forth. So we began to ask ourselves, what is peace the presence of? Rather than asking, what is it the absence of? We're asking, what is it the presence of? And we found that it is the attitudes, the institutions and the structures which sustain peace. And this is what positive peace is about. So when we say negative peace, we don't mean that negative peace is bad. We simply mean that it is described by the absence of something rather than the presence of something. And in this description of positive peace, the IEP identified eight pillars uh, of what we call, you know, the eight pillars of peace. We won't dwell too much into them uh, as we'll be doing the training uh, throughout the week, but just in summary, it's a well-functioning government free flow of information, equitable distribution of resources, uh, low levels of corruption, respect for the rights of others, a sound business environment, uh, high levels of human capital uh, development, good relations with neighbors, and, uh, and uh, high levels of human capital, uh, as I had mentioned before. In terms of the latest positive peace report, you will notice that, for example, one of the pillars which had a decrease was high levels of human capital. And what does this have to do with peace, you might ask? But then if you notice that when there is high levels of unemployment, then criminals can come in and entice your youth. Then terrorist organizations can come in and lure your youth away. Then even corrupt politicians can come in and say, do you know what? Here's a pair of shoes. Uh, here's 10 or $20. Can you go and beat up the next person? So you begin to see the very real link between uh, the indicators or the situation on the ground in what the numbers are saying in these pillars of peace and the actual peace situation uh, in the country. In terms of its, its, its regional position, Nigeria is number 27 out of uh, the 44 countries, and this is a very, very uh, solid position, I think, uh, moving forward. I think earlier when I cut, we were talking about the Ecological Threat Register, 
which is where I was saying Nigeria has five ecological threats which are facing it, which is food, water, population growth, droughts, and floods. And while they may not seem like they affect peace, they really, really do. I'm sure you're all aware of issues um, of conflict between farmers and herders. I'm sure you know the issues that happen uh, between borders when IDPs and refugees are moving back and forth, uh, either in search of water or food and so on and so forth. So these are all very, very vital statistics um, in terms of their impact on peace. In relation to the ecological threat register, there's also the very real situation that occurs where if you have a very low level of resources, that means the competition for those resources is high and people are fighting for those things. And as people fight for those things, it degrades the quality of the resource, which increases the competition for them. So you find that at some point, it is our job as peace builders, as positive peace activists to then say, we need to reverse that negative uh, vicious circle and start a positive cycle where we see uh, instead of things getting worse and worse, things get better and better. Rather than a situation where conflict leads to a breakdown in resources, to mean that resources are used to build resilience, resources are used to build capacity, resources are used to build inclusiveness, and then society can move uh, forward in that way. Another report that we do as the IEP is what we call the Global Terror Index. Unfortunately, Nigeria does not do very, very well uh, in this report, uh, scoring a very large number of deaths as a result of terrorist activity. However, it is not all doom and gloom. There was a significant fall in the number of deaths. I think it's roughly 72% in terms of a fall in number of deaths. Also, there are more resources being poured into efforts to contain and end the, ter the terrorist threat. So this is something that is very, very important that we need to bear in mind in terms of uh, our efforts and as we continue to, to, to learn about positive peace. Uh, I think at this point, I will pause. I'm not sure what's going on with my, uh, my PowerPoint presentation, which is just rushing and stopping. But I think in short, that was just an overview of some of the work we do as IEP. And hopefully it gave a little bit of a glimpse into you know, the current situation from a very empirical, from a very data-based point of view. Uh, of course, the presentations will be available online. I saw a few participants uh, complaining that the internet is cutting, and I think uh, my connection as well was a bit uh, blurry. So definitely we'll share these things and make sure they're available for you as well. So uh, thank you for your attention, and I will hand over to Pietro so we can take uh, a few questions. Thank you very much, Milton, for that overview of um, Nigerian peculiarities. I would say it's uh, a topsy-topsy record, improvements and uh, deterioration here and there, but um, it's a work in progress. Over in the chat box, we've had questions dwelling on, um, on the certification, questions concerning different aspects of the training and um, demands for email of um, the data presentation and recorded links, as you've mentioned earlier. So let me quickly address issues concerning certification. Um, I would like to state that there are two certifications. One is the unified certification that will be issued for this course after which participants might have taken their test and had a score of IEP Positive Peace Ambassador Certification. That would be given to participants after which they conduct a training or a presentation, a, a presentation training or a project that addresses any of the eight pillars of positive peace. So before you can embark on this um, presentation or this quest to attain the Ambassador Certification, you need to follow the process that Milton mentioned earlier about registering into the IEP database. So there are two certifications. 
one that will be given after the training and test has been taken. That certification is from UNESCO, ICBA, Aregato, and IEP. Then the second is the ambassadorial program, which is solely an IEP positive ambassadorial network thing. Coming to another issue that was raised concerning um, peacemaker builders that are already signed up and have taken the IEP test before, whether this training is compulsory for them or necessary for them, as the case may be. I would like to say that um, this training is very necessary as it's not just dwelling on IEP concepts, it's also dwelling on contemporary issues in Nigeria to help you understand, to make sense of it more, of what the realities are. And also the, the pedagogies of UNESCO ICBA. What pedagogy simply refers to is the method of training peace builders, the method of how you can train not just yourself, or how you can train the trainer. So it's a train the trainer kind of training where you be, you know, your capacity will be enhanced on how you can um, duplicate or replicate your training, the training you've acquired by next week. So you can see that these various concepts are necessary for your peace building activities. Also, we have questions concerning the joining Rotary Action Group for Peace. I think um, PDG Allison have made good mention of that. And um, I would furnish everyone her email, or as the case may be, there will be a cross reference with that. If you are interested, we will reach out and um, inform you properly on how to go about that. Let me uh, mention at this point that um, the links of this recording we made. Uh, Level so that you refresh your memory going forward, and not just this uh, today's opening ceremony. All the training will be recorded and provided to you for reference purposes when necessary. So the recording will. Be the the slides will also be mailed, and every other things that. You I think every member, every participant, got these housekeeping rules are intended to have decorum, intended to make you arrive on time, intended to keep you um, at attentive position throughout the training. So I advise we take the, the housekeeping rules seriously and uh, follow the guidelines as it involves um, attendance and the examination respectively. Uh, I don't know if there's a, a closing remark from UNESCO, ICBA, or IEP, as the case may be. We could take that as this point because we'll be closed in, in the next six minutes. Any closing remarks from IEP or any reminder, anything you'd like to shed more light on before we call it a day? Uh, thank you. Thank you, Pietro. Once again, I think it's, it's important to thank our honored guests. Uh, we, we can't thank you enough. And then I saw a few questions in the chat box uh, with regards to the certificates. Yes, the certificates will be free. Uh, they will not be charged. They are free of charge. So that's not something we need to, to worry about. And I think we will be um, as well paying attention to who's logged on to the online, uh, sorry, to the pre-recorded sessions, which are available on the site that I, uh, I mentioned. So that's important. You need to watch all three sessions before the live sessions before, uh, so that we can, you know, have a, have a more robust conversation and then uh, issue your certificate. So that's important as well. But otherwise, uh, from our end, we are excited to go into this week and we look forward to seeing you all on Wednesday. Thank you very much, Milton. Yes. Um, um, Dr. Yerusalemo, do yes. you have any closing remark? Yes, uh, thank you very much. and. Uh, uh, today it seems more of information giving and uh, more of interacting session uh, just to get to know each other who is doing what. Um, so as of Wednesday, uh, this week we'll have the session on Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, the same time. So people, I would like to remind people to use the same link, which is uh, circulated so far. And next week it will be on Monday, Wednesday and Thursdays, the same time at the same time. So 
uh, it will be more engaging, I hope, and uh, I hope we will keep the people who are attending today. And uh, also feel free to communicate us via Telegram, which many of you are joined in, and also through email if you need any information or if you need any support on the training and all the documents will be shared uh, today. Okay, thank you very much. And thank you colleagues and also participants for attending. And it's a very peaceful and harmonized uh, Zoom meeting despite our number. I think it was not noisy and thank you very much. Thank you, doctor. Uh, at this point, I want to call on PDG James Onions to give us the closing remarks so that we can wrap up today's ceremony. You didn't warn me of this. <laughs> <laughs> you are always prepared, James. And, 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 it, and it's great. There's everyone's picture but mine on there, so that's good. I can, I can remain anonymous. I, I, I just want to wish you all a great two weeks. Um, and I, to me, the most important word is hope. Um, I, I do a lot of work in the area of water where communities can't get to water. They're walking many, many miles. And by creating water sources near their homes, they have hope. And I think our job as peacemakers is to go out and create hope in our communities. Um, so... Uh, please, please go do that. Take action and enjoy yourselves along the way. Thank you all. And thanks. thank you all for giving your time to join this and giving your time to become peacemakers. Thank you. Thank you, my PDG. Distinguished returns, peacemakers, peace lovers, friends and guests. It's a single, sincere honor of mine to tell you that today's session has come to an end. We look forward to you joining us on Wednesday, same time for the second part of your training. Congratulations. Thank you, Pietro.